Let's go ahead and jump into the game, guys, as the game number one has already started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Belshire Vestige. It's my pleasure to bring you Petraeus from Team Fene Frenetic Array. That's a tricky one to pronounce. I've got to give him that. He is in the blue trunks and he is playing Zerg to the southeast. Versus his opponent, recently transferred to IVD Gaming, formerly of Quantic, in the red trunks playing Terran. It is Apocalypse. Sorry, IVD really impressing me lately as an organization, picking up two really strong players on top of Apocalypse. We just saw Masan and Puck move over there. Of course, both those players uh, came from Root Gaming. So kind of unfortunate for Root, but great to see IVD Gaming, an up-and-coming team, make it all the yeah, way in the big leagues. Certainly. We're seeing a number of those lately, and that's interesting because, you know, the old staples were, are shedding players, and honestly, I think that's okay. Since we don't really have a very Team League-focused environment for StarCraft II right about now, especially for foreign players, I think it's more sustainable to have these smaller teams with less players as opposed to these gigantic teams that can't really yeah. sustain themselves with the sponsors. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, it's pretty top-heavy right now with the, the teams yeah. that are there. And then, of course, there's no middle class, similar to America right now. Ah, we're getting sense. political, are we? Excellent. Well, one minute 57 <laughs> into the game, and we can already complain that the Obamacare website it, right? doesn't work or hey, whatever. at least America is ten times better than the UK, right? Am I right? Well, to be fair, we do have David Cameron as a leader, so I'm actually going to go with yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> no question about that. Everyone hates that guy, and he will be out of office very, very soon, I think. All right, well, let's pull it back to the game. I'm sorry to actually talk about that already. But, um... Uh, you've got to get a level of awkward up there, man. You've got <laughs> to start off with, let's say something highly politically offensive. Let's just charge the cast before we even start. All politicians in America are useless. Well, that's not even... That was the least charged. controversial yeah, statement whatever. you've ever made. Well, what, what could I say? The Republican Party is a joke? Is that correct to say? Is that... Or is you see, that... now, you know, now maybe you're getting into dangerous territory, but you know, saying <laughs> all politicians of the U.S. are useless is actually less controversial than saying Apocalypse plays Terran from time to time. Oh, okay, yeah. Mm. All right, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. We'll, we'll do it next game. I'll start it off, all right? For those oh, of wonderful. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> all right, standard play coming out from both these players. We can see a Reaper yep. expand out of Apocalypse on the other side. Just a regular gas opening for Petraeus, opting for that speed. Nothing too crazy. Not from these bears. Uh, Frenetic Array, are you familiar with this team at all? Not especially, if I'm totally honest. I'm really not. As people should be aware, of course, Petraeus is from New Zealand. So that's an interesting thing. We don't see that many players from New Zealand. But he is on the same team as the Terran, whose name I can never pronounce, but who has a fantastic beard. That, I think it's Igers. Oh. <laughs> that's pretty sick. I know Frene Frenetic Array only from Heroes of New Earth. And it's because I still play Heroes of New Earth. Um, Why? Why do you still play Heroes of New Earth? It's still a great game, John. I'm telling you right now, it's still a great game. Stop being such a hater. You're, oh, you're I, I've had haters. my past with S2, what can I say? <laughs> well, yeah, weren't you a voice? Yeah, you were a voice I, for I, a Corrupted I Disciple. Am. Yeah, I have a skin in that game, interestingly enough, and my wife voice acts two heroes in Heroes of New Earth. Really? Who is it? Forsaken Archer and Succubus. Oh, wow. That's amazing. You know what else is amazing? The fact that Apocalypse is doing this much with two Reapers. So far, one drone has already gone down. All four of the Zerglings are dead. A lot of links to it, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, taking out four Zerglings and a drone is fantastic in and of itself. And Apocalypse is doing the pulp build. Nothing wrong with the pulp build if, uh, if it wins you two WCS America championships. Yeah, you could call it the WCS America Championship build, which is a pretty good build as far as I'm concerned. If there's a build you're going to copy, copy the one that wins consistently. Yeah. And we're going to see that Hellion follow-up there, and that's going to accompany the Reapers. I saw this in... It was Drunken Boy pulled this same build against... Who was it? It was against Vibe in WCS Challenger a couple of days ago when I mm -hmm. castled with Mr. Bitter, and it was ridiculously effective. It did so much damage. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, normally you're expecting... 11-minute uh, timings, but this attack or th these builds come at 9.30 to 10, and that's why a lot of Zergs are just caught off guard, and it's really unfortunate because I think a lot of Zergs should be researching a little bit more and saying, okay, well, this is the timing I have to actually defend against this. Zergs sprinting yeah. into the natural base. They're going to be shooting off pretty easily here. 
Yeah, the false cancel on a bunker and get an SCV out of the way, but nothing too damaging. Uh, we didn't have to see an SCV pull or anything like that. And this is going to handily defend against this. So this isn't going to do anything. Petraeus needs to realize that and get out of there. In the meantime, he's actually going double evolution chamber, building a few maulings as well. Uh, my concern is that if he build, if he goes kind of half assed on either of them, he's going to have difficulty defending against this push. Ten links is not enough to do that. The double evolution chambers, the queens will certainly help, but there are only three queens on the map, so he does still have to be a little bit careful. Yeah, I agree. This is um, probably the the most conventional timing, though. In Apocalypse, after seeing a lot of Zergans, he should be a little bit more defensive. I mean, two queens, it's not necessarily enough to, to defeat all of these units, but of course they don't want to trade too much. The purpose of Hellions and Reapers at this stage of the game is just to receive the creep. You can see where his positioning is. You could choose the natural or right outside that the other ramp to the natural. But he's choosing to stay around the third base, receive the creep that way, so that way the fourth base is a lot more manageable once he goes into end game stage. Yeah, and the nasty thing about it is that it's you can, of course, use it the way that you described, and that's the purpose of it. But if the player isn't paying attention, then you can end up just going into a base and inflicting massive damage. And what's going to happen here is not only is Petraeus supply blocked as a result of having his Overlord sniped by Viking, but he's going to be on the receiving end of a two-pronged attack with a four Widow Mind Drop. It's very, it's actually pretty rare to see a four Widow <laughs> Mind Drop onto a Zerg player. Yeah, it is. But thankfully for Petraeus, he's like ready for this. Somehow he knew to make a Spore Crawler inside of his main base before Lair. This is kind of crazy. Even uh, then. This is let's really see how much damage this yeah, does. We'll find out. This They're is going to be vicious, surely. The entire drone line just got popped. I mean, that's really nasty. He's going to be able to get out there with... At least one would have mind. Oh, he gets three wow, out of there. Three out of the four. That's incredible. 11, 11 drones works. killed. Lovely. In total. That's Fantastic. Well, you know, a, sp a spore crawler unfortunately doesn't kill widow mines. It only spots them. So he didn't have anything to help there. Yeah, that's a kind of a unorthodox drop, of course. We don't normally see that. Yes. And came in around nine minutes. So really surprising Petraeus altogether. But this is a point you can see the production facilities are just now starting up. They're starting to produce units. We're 10 minutes into the game. Units tab shows seven Marines holding back against any potential all-ins. So you can see how greedy this build is, and that's the real problem with the pulp build. It is very light in the beginning stages. You're trying to be harassing the whole time, so they're so busy at defending that they don't have time to actually put any counter aggression on. And this is a stage where I think uh, because we're going into macro game, Apocalypse is going to be way, way far ahead, just economically speaking. Yeah, and then it comes down to whether or not the Zerg can actually do damage with run buys and with Mutalisks, which is what you generally expect from this position. Mm. With all six gases taken and with double upgrades coming on Link Bane Link, Muta is a decent follow-up. But his gas count isn't really that high, so if he wants to build a Spire and he wants to actually get Muters up, then it's going to take him a little while to do that, especially since he started another upgrade. So it looks like we're just going to see Ling Baneling from the Zerg player for a while. Kind of interesting there. Um, I mean, Ling Baneling, you always accompany that with Spire tech. I feel like the, the first Medivac drop, it can get shut down, but it'll never get completely destroyed, right? You don't have that anti-air to deal with it, so this no, is still... Don't. A difficult situation for Petraeus to be in. He's taking his fourth base over the mid right hand position. I like this a lot better than the mid left, knowing that he's expanding to the top left hand corner. Um, you know, the push distance is a lot closer, so everything makes a lot of sense for Apocalypse. He's now pushing out, and he could inflict some massive damage because, again, there's no meters on the field. Yeah, you're right. And the Mutalisks are on the way now. The Spire's coming up, but we're not going to see them for another couple of minutes at least. And the question is, will we even see that many? If he's forced to morph more Banelings for defensive purposes, that means that usual 9 or 10 Muta kind of surge with plus 1 isn't going to happen. And a few Mutalisks are easily dealt with with a Missile Turret in either Mineral Line. So Apocalypse is looking in pretty good shape. I have to wonder when he starts to get aggressive next. This Viking has been doing a great job of spotting any potential links moving out and also picking off overlords and overseers but we should look at Petraeus's count I mean that is 68 zerglings and 16 banelings and there's not that many units on the field for apocalypse relative to that if some good connections happen but he's got to watch out for the widow mines running into the third base 2-2 just about to finish so he kind of wants to wait until that happens he's trying to back apocalypse out as best as possible scan goes down yeah. clearing up some creed tumors and Petraeus is going to try to commit here, but, I mean, there's three yeah. medevacs. Bit of a bad, well, it's not enough to pick up everything, but he's able to evacuate most of it. It was kind of a bad angle for Petraeus, but it, it was able to save the third base, so I guess that's okay. 
as you pointed out, I don't agree with his commitment to attacking that third of the Terran player, especially considering that his upgrades weren't done and he didn't bring any Banelings with it. So he was trying to attack a, a bunker that you couldn't fully surround because of its position. So that didn't really work out so well for him. But now Petraeus does have that 2-2 army ready to rock and roll, and let's see what damage he can do. He needs good micro. Widowmines are going to burrow here, and the Banelings, oh my god. All right, they don't Ooh, get good connections. Yeah, so now they're getting Age Angle for Petraeus. He ran into a wall of Marines, which very easily dealt with that, but there are still a lot of Banelings, and that bunker's going to die. Petraeus, is he going to be able to do any actual economic damage here? He wipes out the remainder of the Marines, but can he... Oh, he finds some SCVs. Some good damage being done here. There's a great 2-2 timing. You can see it's 1-1 for the Marines and 2-2 for all the Zergings and Banelings. That's why it's able to be so much more effective, but the drop over the mid-right-hand yep. position, that's where Apocalypse is really going to reap his rewards. He is indeed, and that fourth base is taking heavy damage. The Mutas are moving over. That's not going to be enough. With Lings on the ground, it will be. And that 2-2 is going to help, considering that Apocalypse has been sitting on 1-1. One, one. His 2-2 isn't done yet. That all gets picked up. Barely gets picked up, too. Only the last Marine was able to take it down. But yep. overall, I think Apocalypse is in a much better situation. I mean, that was the 2 timing that he really invested into. It was a lot of Banelings to be committing, and... You yep. have all these mutalisks out for so long. You were mentioning before, it's really late. It's a couple minutes after the normal time that you have them out, or you should have them out. And that's when it's 2-2 against 0-0 zero, zero mutas. What can mutas really do to marines at that stage when you want to be picking off a lot more than you can? They can crush them under the bloody chunks of their bodies as they fall from the sky, which is what happens when you're up against Widow Mines and 2-2 two, two marines with a lack of upgrades there. It's going to come down to Petraeus' control or whether or not he can find openings to do harassment. The economic damage that was done on the third base was not good enough. There's still 66 SCVs and, of course, triple orbital pounding mules down into the ground. And we're not going to be seeing Apocalypse really break stride. A second attack is going to be weaker as a result of Widow Mines being in there and the upgrades of the Mutas charge right into a hail of bullets, which isn't going to help at all. Apocalypse is pre-split, ready to deal with these Banelings. If he deals with the well, he'll be okay. And, oh, that's just an absolute slaughter. Apocalypse absolutely destroys that army, no problem at all. And minimal loss is done. A few more workers killed, though, with a nice little backstab into that mineral line. I'm not sure exactly why uh, Petraeus is trying to be so aggressive here. I mean, there, there's not a lot of reasons to try to attack a Terran off creep, right? Like, it just yeah. doesn't make sense normally. It's so hard to connect with your Banelings as it is on creep, and now you're you're trying to get the best conne connections off creep. I think counterattacking to the natural would have been a much better play, but even that, it's very difficult. Thor out in the field, that's going to complicate things, TV. It is, yeah, and he's, oh. he's suiciding the mutalists. I have no idea why he just did that. I mean, it's not like he needed to free up supply or anything. But the question I suppose you've got to ask uh, for a Zerg at this point is where does he go from this point? You can't stay on this tech. 3-3 three, three is starting here for the Terran player. And once that happens, Ling Bane Ling and Muta will not cut it against Biomine. So you need to see some progression here. We're going to see an infestation pit go down. Does it go straight into Hive? And is this the time to do it? Because Apocalypse is not going to let him. Apocalypse is going to keep pushing, try and push that creep back, and start to really get aggressive while Petraeus is scrambling to find a transition. That's right. I mean, Petraeus is just looking to hold on for dear life. And it's unfortunate because if he kept his Zergings and Banelings, he wouldn't have been in this position to begin with. He yeah. would have been able to tech easily. But instead, he has to use all that gas that would have been going to Hive over to make more Banelings. And that's, uh, that's a very costly, costly endeavor. But now yeah, he's still more mutalists as well, which I don't agree with here. And now he's going to go for the engagement, and he gets a decent connection with a couple of Banelings here. Will he be able to make this work? Banelings coming up to the side. That is a flank for the ages right here by Petraeus. But there are still a lot of Marines on the ground, and unfortunately, it is not quite enough to clean this up. That's right, and mutas don't do anything. GG gets called, and Apocalypse will take game number one. Very nicely done by Apocalypse.